Thank you, everybody. Um, we've now signed the agreement to mediate, and I will provide copies of that to each of you throughout the course of the day. The purpose of this meeting now, of us getting together, is for you both to make opening statements, if you wish to, and for your solicitors to do so as well, which will help me in understanding what the issues are that we need to explore today, uh, but perhaps more importantly, to allow each other to hear, maybe for the first time, just what the issues are and how they have affected you and your commercial enterprise. Now, before I ask you to make an opening statement, there are just a number of things that it would be useful for me to say at this point. The first is that mediation is voluntary and you're only here because you want to be here, and I'm delighted that you are here today. I am a great believer in mediation. I wouldn't be sitting in this chair if I wasn't, and I would like to encourage you in what you're trying to achieve today. Over 80% of cases that come to mediation resolve within a day. And I think that's a very encouraging note to carry around with you throughout this day, which will be a hard day and taxing in lots of different ways. But we're working towards a solution of a problem that both of you have. The other thing I want to talk about is confidentiality. And I have mentioned that briefly with your solicitors when we met. And that is that everything that's said here in this opening session and perhaps even more importantly, when I meet with you privately, is confidential and private. That means I am not at liberty to speak to anybody about what's been said to me unless you specifically authorise me to do that. Now, I hope that that would mean that you would feel able to speak to me frankly about the issues that you have, the strengths of your case, the weaknesses in your case, all the issues that surround the dispute. Because if I understand fully what you're experiencing and how it's affecting your company, then hopefully I can assist you in finding a solution. Authority is something I want to touch on now. Um, can I just ask you, Hans, do you have authority to settle this matter today if we got to that stage on behalf of, of Cower Management? Yes, I certainly do. Yeah. Good. I have the complete authority of the company and the, the backing of everyone behind me. Okay, that's very helpful. Jay, what's your position? Uh, my managing director is abroad at the moment, yeah. but he has authorised me to conduct this meeting. I've got instructions for that, but um, it's very, we're very keen to get a proposal met today. So I would call, I have means of contacting him abroad to get any final sort of decision okayed by him. Okay. Leslie, I don't know what your position is and what Jay's just said about authority there. Do you have any comment you want to make on that? Well, as uh, a partner of the firm Sure and Dear Solicitors, again, I have the backing of my firm to represent Cower Management yeah. Consultancy fully. Okay. I was just wanting to pick up on what Jay has said about her position with authority. Yeah. As I understand it, she's saying that she's here and she would need to speak to somebody who's not present, perhaps, to obtain authority if things moved in a particular direction. Now... I don't know what, how you and your client, Hans, you feel about that. Do you have any comment on that? Or are you quite content to proceed on that basis? Well, at the moment, I'm quite content to proceed. OK. How contactable is this individual? And who is it, Jay? Can you just give us a bit more information? Um, it's, it's my immediate superior. Mm -hmm. um, his name's James. He's James Brown. He's the managing director of 3WP. Right. Business has taken him abroad at the moment. Right. I have a, a contact number for him, which I believe I can get from his family home. So I've, I've certainly spoken with my clients before they came, and he's yeah. going to make himself available. So he will be at the end of the phone line, and oh, we that's can fine. be reached. He is he's very aware of what the proceedings mm. that are going on today. He's going to be physically present just now, but yeah. he definitely will be contacted. Yeah. If it's we not get very appropriate, is it? No, it won't hinder us in any way at all. He is contactable at the end of a phone mm. line. He, sh he actually should have been here in the first place. Well, no, because um, Jay here knows uh, you know, as much, if not more, about the actual day-to-day -day running of this contract. No, that's OK. So you're confident a decision can be reached today yeah. by means of contact? Yeah. Yep. Yes. OK. That's fine. I mean, the, the, to start with, the whole uh, episode here of this contract isn't satisfactory at all to me. And I'm very concerned 
that your company have let me down so badly and they caused a serious problem for the future of my company and also for my personal uh, position within the company. So that's why I'm quite concerned about uh, your managing director not being here. Mm -hmm. I respect that you're, being, that you're here and you're trying to organise uh, the, this final conclusion between us through yeah. the good offices of uh, Pam here. Um, but um, I hope that we can sort this out. Yes, similarly that's what, uh, why we're here today, hope to reach an, an agreeable conclusion mm. that it's satisfactory both parties. Yeah. Well, I, I find that very helpful that both of you have felt able to express that so clearly now. Um, in the agreement to mediate, which you've just signed, it clearly states that all parties will use their best endeavours to try to resolve the dispute. And it's been very good to have that underlined by what both you, Hans, and Jay have had to say. So thank you for that. As far as authority is concerned, Hans, are you content to leave it on the basis that's been outlined by both Jay and Terry? Yeah, as long as um, uh, amic an amicable solution can be found at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then really, at the, as, at the end of this day, I want to get this sorted out. Mm -hmm. I don't want to take it any further than that than today. Yeah. Well, I'm sure that is what we are all hoping to achieve, is that tomorrow when we wake up, we won't have this dispute, you won't have this dispute. That, that, that will be behind you in that sense. Good. Well, can I just say another couple of things that I need to say because they are the sort of framework for the rest of the day. As I think you know, but I need to emphasise, everything that's said is also non-binding until an agreement is reached. If, and I hope we do get to that stage where you have worked out a resolution to the problem, then I would ask Leslie and Terry to be involved in actually drafting the terms of the agreement between the two companies. But until that point is reached, you, you are not bound by anything that you say to me uh, throughout the course of the day. And also, anything that happens here today doesn't affect any rights that you may have out with this mediation process. I'm not sure what, what, what the stage is with any litigation process. Terry, can you fill me in on that? It's just at a very early stage where a writ's been served uh, on my clients with lost skeletal defences but not going any further right. than that as yet. I think we were sort of hoping that perhaps we could explore the possibility of the matter being settled now rather than um, the court action running its full length. Yeah, OK. Well, the fact that you have this litigation process um, is not affected by what happens here today. Any rights that you may have to pursue or defend that action are re retained, and I think that's important for me to stress that. And it's also important for me to explain my role, that I'm not here to make any decisions or evaluate anything that is said to me. There's no right or wrong here. I'm here to assist you, so I am not judging what has happened in the past or coming to any view in it. As I, as I say, and I'll, I'll probably keep saying throughout the course of the day, it is for you to find the solution to your own problem. Now, can I just explain a little bit about the day? Um, in a minute I'm going to invite you, as you know, to make brief opening statements uh, of the position as you understand it. And once we've all had the opportunity to hear those, we'll then go into our separate meeting rooms again, and I'll meet with you there and uh, take a little time exploring some of the issues that have been raised. Uh, and that will really be the way the day will proceed from then on. I'll meet with, with one party and then I'll meet with the other party. There may be times when it's useful to come together again. Uh, it may be useful at some point for me to meet simply with the lawyers or simply with you, Hans and Jay. Well, the process is flexible and we have to make it work for us. But that gives you a little idea of what may happen throughout the rest of the day. Is there anything on that that you want to ask anybody? No. Nope. Well, uh, is there anything you would like to say? I think everything's clear at the moment. Yes, okay. Thank you. Is that all right, Hans? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, could I ask you now to make your opening statement? And since Cower is pursuing this case, as I understand it, 
Could I ask you, Hans and Leslie, to make your opening statement? Mm -hmm. I know that you've discussed this between yourself as to who's going to speak, so I'll hand over to you now. Yeah. Well, um, first of all, you know, our company have been uh, badly let down mm. by this project. And uh, we're a, f a forward thinking company and quite dynamic in the international stage. And I feel that um, your company have mismanaged this whole project and let us down very badly. And you've put me in a very difficult position regarding the media and the press. And, and I'm talking about not just locally, I'm talking about all over the world. And I feel very let down and I feel that uh, we should be, my company should be compensated because of the lack of positive direction that your company have taken. Would you like me to summarise the basis of the, the contract between the companies? It's entirely what, what you want to say at the moment, yes, Leslie. I have right. seen the contractual papers, those are available, and we can certainly yes. refer to those throughout the course of the day. Yes. If you think it would be helpful to do that, please, please feel free to so do so. Just a, a brief summary of mm -hmm. what the, yep. the contract, the, the reason for awarding the contract. It was about a year ago, Cower Management Consultancy wished to have a website designed whereby they could take their European business into the world market and to have a fully interactive website in which the subscribers could gain access on, online. Yeah. And to begin with, everything was going swimmingly, but then the end result was that the work wasn't completed on time for a planned launch with uh, investors and subscribers. It was a major event which was planned for four months from the contract. Mm -hmm. It wasn't completed in time and the standard wasn't satisfactory. And this is where Hans here has been concerned that there has been loss of business, loss of face, and that's what has really basically brought us here today. Okay, thank you very much. Can I ask Jay and Terry if you yeah. would like to speak? Uh, well, I think it's all very well talking in general terms um, about being let down, etc. But the, the problem here was that the contract which your company entered into hands, it didn't fully specify the technical detail of what you required. And it was agreed by everybody um, at the time that the contract or the, the, the job as it was ongoing would need a lot of input from your company, technical expertise and advice, etc. And that wasn't forthcoming. So I'm not sure whether you're aware of that or not, but it wasn't a case where you just gave my clients the contract and, and left it there. Your, your firm are, were meant to assist in giving more technical detail and didn't do that. And in actual fact, the main problem thereafter was that Cowers um, delayed in making a payments that were due in terms of the contract. The payments had to be made at stages as the job progressed. And in particular, there was £100,000 interim payment that was due, and which wasn't paid. And it was about a month later it was eventually paid. And the contract, again, dealing with specifics, the contract specifically provided that the time for making that payment was material and it was of the essence of the contract. So when that payment wasn't made, that large payment of £100,000, and actually, fact, my, my clients would have been entitled just to have said at that point, right, cows have broken the contract and just walked away from it and sued for their losses. But they tried to stay with the job and work through it and try to get an acceptable solution at that point. Um, but, you know, the, the, really, you're, you're complaining that my clients let you down, but similarly, my clients wanted to do the job, they wanted to get it done properly, um, but they weren't given the support they required from your, your firm. Well, you were given support from the financial director, um, Francis Green. You were given all the technical support that you needed from him. That's, that's not actually true in terms of all that we needed. There was some... I understand you had some staff changes at Cowers? Well, there's staff changes everywhere. Aha, uh -huh, Every yeah. week of the year, all but, around... But in every what, business. What we found was a bit of a communication breakdown after that, so that the information that we needed in order to complete the specifics of the contract um, were not met. Well, 
As management consultants, it's uh, normal for us to advise to clients to have specific technical support groups and project groups for any particular...